Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of our series, Morning Reflections on the 99 Names of Allah. Inshallah, today we'll be covering four more names of Allah, uh, Al-Qahir, Al-Qahar, Al-Qarib, and Al-Mujib. And we'll have covered 34 names, inshallah, by the end of the session. These names have the meanings of uh, the dominator, the subduer, as well as the most close, uh, the one who responds. Uh, inshallah, to begin with uh, Al-Qahir and Al-Qahar, Bismillah. Uh, so the root meaning of these names has, uh, it means to have a domination over something or to subdue uh, something from above. The difference in the two of these is in the intensity of the two, that Al-Qahir informs us that Allah is able to dominate all of creation from above, and Al-Qahar emphasizes that he is able to subdue and overpower even that which is most powerful or most numerous in our eyes or in, in, in just the physical reality. And though these names, when translated, they might sound scary, they might sound terrifying because of our current comment, our general uh, connotations of domination and what that imagery entails, they should actually, in fact, when we, when we, unpack this name when we look at it from the true lens of understanding, not just on the translation level, because we know that uh, when a word is translated, especially a divine name of Allah, divine attribute of Allah is translated from Arabic to English, uh, justice is not done from just uh, being able to give a single singular translation, uh, that there's so much more to unpack in these. But the fact is that these names of Al-Qahar and Al-Qahir should inspire us with respect to awe. They should give us a sense of reverence for Allah and a healthy fear that prevents us from committing injustices, from pre that prevents us from utilizing any power that we have, any authority or anything that we may have over somebody in a way that harms them or to see ourselves as better. Uh, so no matter how much power we think we have, this name should remind us or these names should remind us that Allah is Al-Qahir over us. Allah is Al-Qahar and able to do uh, so much more than what we may be able to do uh, in this world. So as I mentioned, it might give us a terrifying feeling thinking of these names with respect to the terms of domination, but we want to disconnect ourselves from that limiting imagery uh, that oftentimes is just associated with what we may uh, see with respect to historical context and the use of that name and, and to expand it to uh, the divine attribute that uh, when, when we think about this name, we remember that even though Allah is Al-Qahar and Allah is Al-Qahir, these are names alongside the same names of Al-Qarib and Al-Mujib, the ones that are the responder, the ones that are the close. And the Quran tells us that to flee to Allah, not to flee away from Allah. Fear of anything other than Allah naturally causes us to flee from it. If there's a fire, if there's a bear, if there's something that we're afraid of, we're going to run the opposite direction. But fearing Allah and having a fear of Allah is that should, which should actually make us go towards Allah. It's a very interesting thing that when we are fearful of Allah, we should run towards Allah as a way to cover us, as a way to help cleanse us and to make us better and to forgive us. Uh, we don't want to flee away from Allah uh, because Allah is the one who is at tawab as we will cover that Allah is the one who accepts all who return and Allah loves those who return and the loving of this uh, repentance and turning that people do. And so remembering that uh, Al-Qahar and Al-Qahir don't just stand alone in, with respect to the divine attributes, as with any of the attributes, they all stand together, but especially these names stand with the names of wisdom, of awareness, not just blind domination, and they're an expression of justice, not of subjugation. We remember Allah says that Allah has forbidden oppression from himself, so these names cannot be synonymous or in the context of oppression, that these are in the context of how Allah is the most just, and they stand alongside Allah when Allah says that Allah is al-adl, the most just, rather than a negation of it. And so Allah is al-qahar over those who oppress and those who misuse their power. Many people think that when they're given authority or power, whether political, social, or uh, any type of uh, authority that may be given, uh, a lot of times they uh, when they're given that authority, they may abuse it, they may misuse it. And we see this time and time and time again, 
uh, from leaders that might be in our religious communities to leaders who are in the political uh, stratas. And so it might make us ask then, why does a law allow oppression to continue or tyranny to persist? But we must remember, just as we were talking about before, to not divide up Allah's names and think that Allah is only this and not that. Allah is only this and not that. But to see Allah is all of these and more that we may not be able to comprehend. That we remember that the, uh, there's a wisdom and there's a generosity that is inherent to Allah that even gives opportunities to those who are uh, in the worst of creation or have done the worst of things to have that opportunity to return before they are subjected to judgment. We think about Fir'aun uh, and what he did and how far gone he was, yet the uh, number of uh, chances he was given in this aspect before being subjected to the judgment. Uh, this subduing and domination, again, when we have this imagery in our minds of what this is uh, containing, we oftentimes think of someone beating someone else or misusing or mistreating someone, someone being over another person and abusing them. And that's what that domination sometimes uh, constitutes in our mind. But this subduing and domination, when we think of it with respect to Allah, when we think of it with respect to Al-Qahar and Al-Qahir, can be one of the hearts can be one internally that our hearts might be subdued or dominated that they might never experience rest or experience true peace because they were never aligned with God that they disobeyed a law or that they had transgressed against the law so they were hardened or they were not given uh, that uh, which which pleases a law and so Rework this imagery of, of domination in your minds and expand on it and think about the other ways that uh, Allah uh, can subdue and can dominate in a way that's not limited to just the physical, but also into the spiritual, into the emotional and, and that which is underneath. So those who commit injustice in different ways, ultimately we believe that they will be given recompense. We might not see it in this life, but inshallah, part of our belief is that uh, Allah does not let uh, these injustices go unpunished. And these these injustices uh, and those who commit injustice will be uh, brought to justice, if not in our lifetimes, at the end of the line, uh, because we remember as we lift up that Allah's spectrum and Allah's continuum based on ours here, ours is very finite, just limited to our corporeal bodies, but Allah's continuum and spectrum for when justice can be uh, meted out and be given uh, is uh, when, when, when the, uh, at, by, by all time, is at the end of the time when Allah has promised that on the day when full recompense will be given, that perhaps someone's injustices are being delayed until that point for them to be uh, really brought to awareness of what they did uh, and then be recompensed for it. So this name in uh, many other ways should also make us not just not just make us fear uh, you know, Allah, but make us fear oppressing others, being oppressors ourselves, but also it should teach us the, the, uh, the opposite in a sense to not fear oppressors, to not fear those who think that they have power over us. They may be able to damage our body. They may be able to, uh, you know, kill the physical, but they cannot kill the spirit. They cannot take away, uh, what Allah has inherently imbued in us. And so remembering that to not fear the oppressors because Allah is al-Qahar and over them. Think of Asiya, the wife of Pharaoh, who uh, having her husband being the oppressor that he was, knew uh, to not fear him, despite the fact of what he was going to commit and what he did commit against her. Uh, and, and, you know, being able to hold that hope in Allah and hold that, uh, hold that strength and belief in Allah. So how do we live with these names? So we want to first and foremost remember that in this domination, we dominate uh, our own lower desires. We don't use uh, this name as a license or think of it as a license to dominate others or to hurt others. We should actually be fearful of dominating or, or of being oppressive or harmful of other or harming others. Um, so using this fear in a healthy way to stop ourselves from committing sins, especially if they are uh, against other people and standing for those who are oppressed, standing for those who are not being given justice. This name should cause us to fear that Allah is on the side of those who are oppressed, on the side of those who stand up for justice and as such and against the oppressors. And so it should motivate us to stand up against oppression and those who who are oppressing and with those who are oppressed uh, and to balance our fear and our hope. We have this fear 
that Allah may punish us or may do these things, but we balance it out that Allah will forgive us. This hope that we have, that uh, we may have a fear that an oppressor may take us over and, and uh, you know, destroy our lives or do all these things to us, but we have hope that Allah will bring this uh, oppressor inevitably to justice. So holding that hope in Allah allows us to see beyond the short term of our current faculties. And lastly, the names that we cover here are Al-Qarib and Al-Mujib, that even though Allah is over us, Allah is the subduer and the dominator, images that might uh, think Allah is uh, very disconnected from us and just from above manipulating what might be happening or controlling what might be happening, but this is not the case as in the names of Al-Qarib and Al-Mujib. Allah lifts up that Allah is closer to you than yourself and that Allah is the one who responds and responds to prayers. So think of the person who is closest to you in your life or the people who are closest to you. What do you associate with them? Trust, love, uh, affection, um, dependence, having all these, you know, finding comfort in them, you have a concern for them and their well-being, they may have the same for you, all of these things that bring your heart warmth. Now think about the aspect when Allah says that Allah is closer to you than your jugular vein, or that Allah uh, is to his servants near when they call upon him. So Allah provides companionship. Allah is the one who is near, but not just the one who's near and just as a presence. Allah is the one who responds or is the one who answers to our prayers or to our requests when we make them. Allah is Al-Qarib, the one who is near, who is close, who knows us, not just our bio data or what's on our driver's license or our demographics, but knows what's in our hearts, knows our state, our state of belief, our state uh, in our spiritual journeys, watches over us, tells us that he is near and uh, invites those of us uh, who are in this presence invites us, it, despite being close, invites us to be close to Allah. Uh, and this closeness can feel comforting, but it can also feel limiting. Uh, but we, we lift up that Allah doesn't just stop at Al-Qarib. Allah brings us even closer and says Allah is Al-Mujib and responds that you can sometimes feel close to somebody, but not feel uh, that you can, that you're being heard by that person. You can feel that you're approximately close, you can feel that you're near to them, but you don't feel that you're, uh, you're being responded to. And Allah addresses this beautifully, that not only is Allah all encompassing and comforting, but Allah responds. So you don't have that feeling. So in this, uh, this name of Al-Mujib, Allah is answering prayers. Allah responds to us when we ask of Allah. Uh, and Allah is as Al-Qarib, he's as, by default, the near one is the one who also is Al-Mujib, the one who responds. It shouldn't make us complacent. It shouldn't make us think that, oh, uh, now that Allah is Al-Mujib and Allah is Al-Qarib to me, um, I can just ask anything and it'll be done or I can do all these things and Allah will respond and I don't have to worry about any of this stuff. No, this should actually show us that we can increase in what we think we can achieve because we have Allah on our side, because Allah will respond to us when we are in need, respond to us in times of trial, in times of success. And all these times, we should be inspired to do even more. Uh, we should be inspired to be even better because Allah is on our side and not to be the opposite in a sense. Uh, and we may not uh, also, you know, ask, we may not feel like we can ask uh, Allah for anything. Uh, and where does this come from? You know, we may not ask Allah because we might not either A, believe that Allah will answer us or B, believe that we can do it instead ourselves without any help. So be aware of this arrogance that can come in our mind uh, and reflect on this, that if we aren't asking Allah for things, why is it not the case when Allah wants us to be those who ask, but also to be asked? So reflect on that. Why don't we ask Allah things? Uh, and how can we uh, rework that, that concept? So if we feel far from Allah, we want to ask ourselves, where, who moved in this relationship? And ask ourselves, what may have we have done in our lives? Because we can only determine what we have done and control over this. What, would, what have we done to kind of put that distance? And how can we bridge that distance and come back closer? We want to fix how we see Allah as well, that Allah is not just someone or a, an, a, or a God that is above us and away from us and not concerned with us. Allah is concerned with us. Allah is close to us. Allah responds to us. So we want to see Allah in, in these beautiful lights, but also we want to check ourselves. We want to uh, check ourselves with respect to how we process different events. We want to, whether they uh, we feel that they drive us from faith or they drive us from Allah, process them holistically. How can these difficult events or these successful events and uh, events that uh, may 
make us, whether they don't make us aware of Allah or they, they make us one way or the other, how do they uh, allow us to connect to Allah in different ways? So keep Allah at the forefront and how we connect. And lastly, how do we live with these names? We understand these names. We seek to understand these names and how they work together. We seek to see our prayer, not just as a ritual, but how can it be a means of connection? How can our prayer, which in and of itself is a, uh, is a call to Allah for help, a call to Allah uh, to answer those requests that we make, how do we treat that prayer if we just feel that it's just, you know, a few minutes of exercise uh, every every few hours or so? So ask Allah in all things because Allah loves to be asked and Allah is the one who responds. Uh, respond to Allah because Allah responds to you and respond to others because Allah has responded to you. So as you love Allah to be for you, so to be for other people. So inshallah, we ask Allah to not just be Al Qahar and Al Qahir for that which uh, is, is, you know, that for that um, to subdue within ourselves, to, to minimize that which we may do, which which heart, uh, harms other people, or which hurts other people, to subdue those negative things inside us, but also to subdue and dominate that which is around us that holds us down, the structures and the injustices that hold us down. And lastly, we ask Allah to be, continue to be Al Qarib to us, but also be Al Mujib to us in all matters and give us the guidance that we so seek. Until next time then, inshallah, we'll see you all then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.